A blessed Lord's Day, brothers and sisters in the Lord, and a happy new year. Once again, we have gathered together as God's people to worship God in spirit and in truth. Our God calls us to worship from Psalm 73, verses 25 to 28. Whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon earth that I desire beside thee. My flesh and my heart faileth, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. For lo, they that are far from thee shall perish. Thou hast destroyed all them that go a whoring from thee. But it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God that I may declare all thy works. As we prepare our hearts to worship God, let us sing the prelude, The Lord is in His Holy Temple. Let us seek God's face together. Our gracious and loving God, once again you have summoned us to come before your presence, to worship you and to receive your grace. Lord, we give you thanks for how you have been so good, so faithful in sustaining us in the past year. And Lord, we thank you because you have done that despite our sinfulness and rebellion and unfaithfulness against you. Lord, we thank you because of the hope that you have given us in Christ. And so this morning, I pray that you receive our worship and offering and praise and receive them because you have promised that your people are now clothed in the righteousness of your Son, cleansed by the blood of your Son. So now our offerings are pleasant, are a pleasant aroma before you. So I pray for your blessings and I pray for your Spirit's work in our midst this morning. In Christ's name. Amen. Amen. The first question of the Heidelberg Catechism reads, What is your only comfort in life and in death? And the answer, That I am not my own, but belong body and soul, in life and in death, to my faithful Savior, Jesus Christ. He has fully paid for all my sins with His precious blood and has set me free from the tyranny of the devil. He also watches over me in such a way that not a hair can fall from my head without the will of my Father in heaven. In fact, all things must work together for my salvation. Because I belong to Him, Christ, by His Holy Spirit, assures me of eternal life and makes me wholeheartedly willing and ready from now on to live for Him. So let us sing the song, our, uh, Christ Our Hope in Life and Death, declaring that in this year, though if, even if we live or even if the Lord desires to call us home, Christ is our hope and He alone. Let's sing this song. What is our hope in life and death? Christ alone. Christ alone, what is our only confidence? That our souls to Him belong, who holds our days within His hand. What comes apart from His command, and what will keep us to the end? the love of Christ in which we stand. Oh, sing hallelujah, our hope springs eternal. Oh, sing hallelujah, now and ever we confess Christ our open life. The truth can calm the troubled soul. 
What truth can calm the troubled soul? God is good, God is good. Where is His grace and goodness known? In our great Redeemer's blood, who holds our faith? stormy tribe who sends the waves that bring us nigh unto the shore the rock of Christ oh sing hallelujah our hope springs eternal oh sing of sin, Satan, and the world daily. And it leaves us shameful, it leaves us weary, and it leaves us broken. But the good news for God's people is that we have hope. And that hope resides in our Redeemer, Jesus Christ. And we are assured that as God's people, this hope will never ever fade, because Christ is ours forevermore. May I request everyone to please rise, and let us sing the song, Christ is Mine, forevermore. Mine is peace that flows 
from heaven in the strength in times of need. I know my pain will not be wasted. Christ completes His work in gracious and loving. Lord, we give you thanks because despite our constant idolatry, you are there ready to discipline in order to restore us, ready to forgive once we come to repentance. And we thank you for all of that. That is all by sheer grace and sheer mercy. And we thank you, O God, because Christ is now ours forevermore. We praise you, we thank you, and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let us remain standing for our offering. The Lord calls us to give from 2 Corinthians 8, 9. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you by his poverty might become rich. So if you're watching online, you may deposit uh, your offerings to the bank accounts flash on your screen. And if you're here, we have a box at the back, so you can just drop your offerings there. Let us sing our offertory hymn.
Lord, we acknowledge that you are our provider. And all the things that we have right now are yours and are given to us as mere stewards. And so what we give back, we give back what is due to you. May you use our offerings for the glory of your name, for, your, for the joy of your people, and for the expansion of your kingdom. We thank you, O God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may now take your seats. Before we hear the preaching of the word to be delivered by Reverend Ramelio Borres, uh, at this point we'll be hearing a report from one of our ministry partners, TAP. Okay, so let us welcome our sister, Rossini Lomoxo. Good morning, everyone. Uh, maayong aga sa tanan. Uh, I am an Ilonga from Surala, South Cotabato. Ako ang missionary nga ginasuportahan sa inyong nga church. Uh, take ini nga opportunity para magpasalamat sa inyong nga tanan. Sa regular nga support ninyo sa akon, kag sa amon man nga ministry sa Translators Association with the Philippines. Uh, ang amon galing nga work, naga ano kami naga guli kami sa mga cultural minorities para sila man makakilala sa Ginoo through our work kami kasi sa department namon uh, language education and development so ginaabot namon ng mga cultural minorities through sa ilang uh, uh, orthography kaya mga minority wala pa sang mga alfabeto dala namo ginasulod ang word of god Gani gintay ko opportunity nga ini pero uh, may special request ako sa in, sa inyo kay uh, uh, hin, na although prepared ako makato sa church ninyo galing kay kahapon ko nabatian ninyo tong na disgrace nga sa lakyan sa lakyan to sa manghod ko nga nakapatay sang tricycle nakabangga sila so uh, hang sa sa gabi kami nagsettle kay may napatay so Pero siling ko, kapasalamat kami sa ginoo kay amo lang itong natabo. Kag sila, ang family ko, wala pa sila sa relasyon sa gino, ginoo. So siling ko, maybe this is the time nga uh, ginpadala ako sa ginoo para sila man makakilala. Kay dugay ko na sila ginawin, pero siyempre mga katalik sila. So this time, kapangay ako sa request sa inyo, nga madala ko sa ginawa ako mga pamilya kag sa ministry man amo sa translators association of the philippines philippines uh, ang amo nga trabaho subong uh, kadamo dahil may 13 languages pa sa pilipinas nga wala pa nakakilala sa ginoo so we are urging everyone to please pray for us nga ang amo nga mission bago mag-abot si jesus christ ma maabot namo ang goal kay gin-assign kami sa uh, weekly Philippines para abutin man ang mga minorities. So, thank you for this opportunity kag makita ako kamutanan. Salamat, Pastor. Thank you. Okay, good morning, everyone. Happy New Year. Thank you very much, Madam, for that uh, update, uh, report. Na? And uh, thank you also for always uh, visiting Jensan every time you come to uh, Marbel or Surala. And we're so happy supporting the, the ministries, uh, different ministries uh, in the mission field. Uh, in fact, uh, in our church also, uh, through the work of uh, the late Brother Frank Pong, uh, we distributed some Bibles, uh, Blaan, uh, Tibuli, Cebuano, uh, Bibles and hymns uh, to those uh, tribal uh, people, some mountain area. And uh, we really need those translations, no? Kasi para ma maintindihan ng mga tao doon sa bundok. No? So thank God for these people. They, they work silently. Now I have uh, classmates at AGS uh, who are in the 
in that field na sa Bible translations. Uh, some of them have a uh, good uh, career already and yet they opted to uh, be part of this uh, work of translations. So, we'll pray for your brother, na? brother ba? A sister. Uh, so, we'll pray for that yung balita pala, no? Nang disgrasya, yung tricycle and pick up ba yan? Yeah, pick up, no? Pick up truck na disgrasya. So, we'll really pray for that. Remember to pray for, for, for them, no? And especially for her prayer requests about the salvation uh, sa family. And I believe that's one of the reasons why he came, she came here often sa Jensan or sa Sorala because she wants to minister her family. And uh, I hope and pray also that for all of us here as church, those who are joining us online and on-site, uh, we have that constant desire to win over, to win our families, our relatives before the Lord. Uh, you've been praying maybe for our relatives and yet up, up to this time, uh, wala pa rin. And there are some na parang pilosok ko masyado. There are some who would try to avoid us uh, because, you know, they know that they will, uh, we will, when we go there, when we visit them, we will share the gospel. Sometimes they would do some lots of excuses para lang iiwasan tayo. But we know that when God starts to work in their hearts, you know, uh, impossibilities will happen. So this morning, uh, I'm so happy and so glad to be here this morning to be able to speak uh, God's word in this very, very first day of the year. No? Thank God, no? uh, because on the very, very first day of the week or the, the year, we're able to gather together as a church uh, to worship the Lord. And I hope that this would set the tone for the year uh, 2023. Um, we're so... Uh, happy that for the year 2022, God has sustained us, although the year was not perfect. There were ups and downs, there were trials, there were difficulties. There are some of us here who have experienced uh, uh, loss of a loved one, friends. Uh, and yet, uh, in all these things, today we can really say that uh, God is good and that He indeed works everything for the good of those who love Him. He allowed those things, difficult things, Good things that happen in our life, okay, uh, for the good, for, for His purpose. And so that's why as we stand this year, in this year 2023, the first day of this year, we are confident that the same God who has been with us for the last year and the past years will be the same God who will be with us for the coming, for this year, 2023. We will trust that God will continue to bless us. God, God, we will trust that God will continue to use us for His glory and for His honor. In fact, God would continue or use us the more no, for, for the ministry. So, yung picture na yan, napakaganda, no? Uh, kasi ako ng picture, eh. <laughs> Ganun, ano? Uh, but that was my last uh, mission trip to Bagumbayan uh, to minister to our church planter, uh, church planting ministry there who are, we are supporting as a church. Uh, that's uh, my last trip for the year 2022. And it so happened na uh, ganun yung, yung dinadaanan ko, no? That's the joy, that's the one of the blessings uh, when you go to the mountains, you know. Although there are times na minsan yung maapakan mo, ahas, okay. Uh, I had this one experience with Pastor Isakar. Uh, we, were, we were really in a hurry because of the, we were catching up the, the crusade, you know, that night. So we were in a hurry, it was already around 7 o'clock or 6.30 in the, in the, the evening. And we were so in a hurry that... Um, yung ahas na sa harap ko, hindi ko na nakita at far sa malayo. That's why nakita ko siya dito na, parang dito sa kayo sa table na yan. So I don't have time to uh, to escape, no? Wala, pag pa mag-brake ako sa motorcycle, sugurado tumba, or pag iiwas ako, tumba rin. So I don't have any chance, uh, uh, wala nang ibang choice. Walang no choice. <laughs> Sabi ni Pastor Yung. So, talagang inapakan ko yung ahas, no? Pero yung Dalawa kong paa, nasa manubela na, nakataas ng gano'n, no? Siyempre naman, no? So, takot. But it was very, very big, no? Because I have, my motorcycle is, uh, ganang, malaki yung motorcycle, pero talagang parang lumipad yung motorcycle because napakalaki ng ahas. And he actually occupied the whole one lane sa, sa kalsada. That's in Bagumbayan. Cemented area yon So that's why hindi siya masyadong makagalaw. Nasa semento siya, eh. Sobrang laki. And... You know, it's a joy serving people in the in the missions work in the in the church planting areas. 
Many times they would say that they are so blessed with my presence, we're so blessed with the ministry, so blessed with the ministry of UEC Jensen. But most of the time when I, when I visit them, uh, I would say that I am more blessed no, uh, as I visit them because I have lots of encouragement seeing the commitment of these people. How they have worked so hard, how they have, uh, how they have labored for the Lord kahit walang support. Kahit very, very little yung support. Some of them, pang gasolina lang po talaga yung kanilang support. And yet, they did not, uh, they did not uh, give up serving the Lord. Uh, there were some na nagkasakit na yung, yung si pastor or yung minsan yung anak. Uh, they will do everything para hindi madala yung anak sa, or sila sa hospital because of lack of money and because of transportation. You know, sometimes, baka sa kalsada ka pa mahulog. Uh, if you have seen last time in my report, yung kalsada parang trail area. No? Parang nagtitrail ako doon sa kasada because napakahirap yung mga daanan. But these people went there to share the love of God, to share the love of Christ. Uh, that's why when I go and visit these people, uh, I go home more blessed, more inspired. Sometimes nahihiya sarili how these people have this kind of commitment na tayo minsan dito sa ministering in the cities. Uh, sometimes kunting adjustments lang, mag-complain pa. Di ba? So, as I said, that's my uh, last trip now. And this year, for our theme, the whole emphasis or the theme for this year is missional discipleship. Missional uh, discipleship. So last year, 2022, it's about life-on-life discipleship. It's more of reaching out fellow believers, walking with them, growing together um, as we disciple them. This time, we have the missional discipleship. We still reach out fellow believers, and yet we have in mind of reaching out those who are outside, who are outsiders, who are unbelievers. A missional uh, discipleship. Because if our discipleship is just focused on these four walls of this building, then maling mali po yung ginagawa natin sa church. Because the Lord Jesus Christ, before He left uh, and, and went back to heaven, He said, go and make disciples of all nations. You have to bring people to Christ. This morning, uh, my topic is, uh, see now. Next. my topic this morning is about having or living a mission-centered life. And it's found, uh, my, my, my text is Colossians chapter 4, verses 2 to 6. May I request everyone once again to please stand up as we read together God's word. Please grab a Bible. It's not, it's not uh, shown there in the, the slides. Please uh, grab a Bible and uh, look at Colossians chapter 4. Um, verse 2 to 6. Okay, okay I, love, I love that sound. <laughs> Open your Bibles now. So... Let's uh, read together God's word. And in verse 2, it says, Continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in it with thanksgiving. At the same time, pray for us that God may open for us a door for a word to declare the mystery of Christ, on account of which I am in prison, that I may make it clear which is, which is how I ought to speak. Walk in wisdom toward outsiders. Make the best use of the time. Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer each person. Shall we come to the Lord in prayer? Father, we just want to thank you, Lord, for how you have blessed our lives, Lord God, for this, the year 2022, Lord God. As we stand together this day, first day of this year, we cannot help but reflect, Lord, the past year thinking about how good, how faithful you are to us, Lord God. And Lord, as we look forward to this year, 2023, we have this confidence, we have this assurance that the same God who had been with us for the past year, whose love was firm, constant, and steadfast, will be the same God who will be with us this year, 2023. And not just even this year, but even for the years to come. Lord, as we come and reflect Upon your word this morning, I pray that you will speak to us, Lord God. As we study, as we, as we uh, meditate on this familiar passage, Lord, I pray that you would speak to us in a fresh way, in a powerful way. 
And this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. People usually, when they are preparing for a mission trip, have you gone to mission trip? I know some of us have gone to mission trip, and in fact, some are able to go to uh, other countries uh, for a mission trip. Some have short uh, mission trips, uh, maybe overnight, maybe, maybe three days or one week. Some have uh, mission week for, or mission uh, trip for one month. So what do usually people, what usually people do when they have mission trips coming? Yung anak ko sana, last, last time na, na pumunta sana ng ibang lugar, mission trip kaya lang because of pandemic, hindi natuloy. But what you do people usually? Pray. Ano pa? Fundraising. Okay? Very important. Fundraising, you pray. What else? So you do fundraising, you pray. And of course, you study God's Word, right? You prepare yourself. Because when you go to the missions, uh, you have to be ready with whatever situation is there. You have parabang military that you have, dapat may bullet ka. Okay? When you go to the missions. In other words, when people go to a mission trip, they usually uh, prepare or have this rigorous kind of preparations. Prayer. And not just prayer, in fact. We do some prayer and fasting. Meetings. Okay? All these preparations for the mission trip. Because they know that they will be going to a mission field. And they know that it will not just be, it will not, it will not be a just enjoy, enjoy lang. But they know that they will be in the battlefield. They know that they will have these spiritual encounters out there. They know that the task would not be easy when you go to the mission field. However, my brothers and sisters in the Lord, let me remind us that we are on mission. As believers of the Lord Jesus Christ, we are engaged in mission. Every day, the people around us needed to be ministered by us believers. We are on mission. The people that God sent in your life every day, that God, the, the people that God has sent in your life every day, they are not there by accident. Because the Lord Jesus Christ said that in this world, you are supposed to be the salt and the light of this world. And here in the passage that we have just read a while ago, here's the Apostle Paul. Before the closing of this epistle, the prison epistle, he challenged his hearers or his readers to be a missional Christian. He challenged them to be involved, to be actively involved in missions. He reminded them that every day they are engaged in mission. It's just sad that some people would just prepare themselves, would just spend time in prayer or study God's word or prepare themselves for the ministry when they are planning to go somewhere for a certain ministries. But brothers and sisters in the Lord, let us all remember that every day we are engaged in mission. The people around us has to be ministered, either believers or the unbelievers. And here in this passage, Paul, you know, after a series of these relationships, different relationships, relationships like family, relationship to work, social relationships, now... He is focusing on our relationship and how we relate with the people he considers or he calls the outsiders. In other words, the unbelievers, those who don't have God, who don't have Christ, who don't have hope. He said, this is how you should act toward these people. Now, Paul was saying, you are always on a mission field. Wherever God would place you, God wants you to be a missional Christian. A missional believer. God wants you to be reaching out to other people. Either you're in business, in work, you're in, in your school, you are in your offices, you're in the market, wherever you are, brothers and sisters in the Lord, 
you are in a mission field. We are on mission. So Paul has challenged here the believers to be actively involved, especially three things here, to be involved in missions. One is in the aspect of prayer. Second is in the aspect of their life on how they should live, should behave in the eyes of the unbelievers, in the presence of the unbelievers. And of course, about their conversations, about their speech. Okay, but I just divided this into two. No? Um, I, one is the inter- intercession of believers about the prayer. And then the other one is the interaction of believers. That includes not just our life, but our lips also. Our talk and our, and our walk as believers. So start with this one. No? Two things I'd like, us to highlight, I'd like to highlight here for us to be reminded. No? And as believers, as believers, we are on mission. And how do we live that life of having that mission-centered kind of life, a Christian? Because usually, pag sabi sinasabing missions, we have to leave home, tama po? We have to go somewhere. But in this passage, we are taught here that mission is not just leaving home and going somewhere, different places. But even in your home or outside of your home, just even in your community. Because Paul was say, talking about people who are outsiders. In other words, people who don't have Christ. Every day, every day in our life, this year, 2023, every day of your life, you will meet people who are outsiders. People who don't have God, who don't have Christ, and who don't have hope. And as believers, will you take the challenge of God's word to be a missional believer? How do we do that? One here, the Apostle Paul talks about prayer. He said in verse 2, Devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and being thankful. Devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. When Paul asked the Christians here to devote themselves to prayer, he was not just asking that he just pray for your needs. Pray for the needs of your church or your family or your business or your career. When Paul asked the Christians in this context about prayer, he was asking about the work of the Lord. That these believers in Colossae would be actively involved in the mission field, in the work, even even though Paul was, will be there ministering, Paul was saying, hey, I want you to partner with me in the ministry. Pray for me. Pray for the work of the Lord. Pray for the salvation of those who are outsiders. Prayer. It's a very, very important aspect. So how are we so far interceding? How are we interceding? as believers for others. How are we interceding? I believe that you prayed for your loved ones. No? And uh, I couldn't we pray for my loved ones for their salvation. No? But there are really times na parang Manlamig ka din because we've been praying for a long time and then you will try to reach out to these people and para mas sense mo na the more lumalayo. The more gumagawa ng mga bagay that, you know, and many times they would really intentionally avoid you because takot i-convert. <laughs> Yan yung idea nila, no? I-convert ni pastor. But here, the Apostle Paul says, you have to be devoted. Another translation, steadfast in our prayer. And it here, uh, it says, devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and being thankful. So, devoted prayer is watchful. 
What does it mean to, to be watchful? To be watchful, that means to be awake. To be awake. It's the idea like when Jesus Christ, before going to the cross, he asked his disciples to pray for him. And yet, he found them sleeping. And then that's why he said, you watch and pray. Watch and pray. Many times, okay? So, yung iba dyan, natutulog na. Mayroon ba? <laughs> o yung baka sa, sa online. It's usually, no? Very tempting when you are watching online. Uh, especially pag very comfortable yung upuan mo. Uh, katulog ka na. Katulog ka nga sa church, eh. Sa bahay pa kaya. Ah, di ba? Especially last night, walang tulog. Halos lahat. So, I hope na you will catch up. Yung babawi kayo. Not this time, ha? Sa bahay na mamaya. Okay? Not, not here. Not here, please. Okay? So, to be watchful means to be awake. Okay? Sometimes, uh, as I said, as we pray for salvation of other people, loved ones, sometimes, we get distracted. Maybe, uh, we stop praying ready for other people. To be watchful means to be awake. That means to be alert at all times. That means uh, to, be, to be watchful means to be vigilant at all times. The, the opposite of vigilance is apathy or indifference. So, when we pray for others, when we devote yourselves in prayer, that means you look for even the slightest things that you could bring to the Lord. Problema sa mga Christians ngayon, as I see it, sorry, there are some Christians, when they hear some gossips, when they hear some issues, instead of bringing it to the Lord, turning it into conversation with the Lord, they would bring it to someone else or to others. That's why that dami ngayon tinatawag na marites, di ba? Ano pa yung ibang term nun? Uh, Tolits, no? Tol, ano bang, ano, sa mga lalaki na yun eh. Tol, ano bang latest, di ba? Tolits, marites, and many other other things. But as believers, and I tell you, I tell you, even pastors are not exempted to that. Leaders of the church. It's just sad to hear when, when other Christians gather, instead of praying for that someone, maybe he fell into sin, or there are some problems that he's encountering. Instead of praying for that person, sa Cebuano, pag ginalibak pa. Diba? But Paul here says that, Apostle Paul says, be devoted. Okay? Devote yourselves to prayer. Being watchful. Being watchful means be awake, be alert, and be vigilant. Whatever, even the slightest things you could see in our world, in our country, in the people around you, you turn that into conversation with the Lord in prayer. Instead of passing it around, passing it on other people. Ang Christians, magagaling din ibang Christians. Pinapadaan sa, we will pray for someone and then naglibak na dito da yun. Diba? But here, the Apostle Paul, the Word of God reminds us to be vigilant, to be, to be watchful in our prayer. Again, the, the opposite of that is apathy. That means indifference. Walang pake. Lack of care. Lack of responsiveness to the needs, to the problems of other people. Okay lang naman ako, bahala kayo dyan. But Paul says, devote yourself to prayer. Be watchful. So devoted prayer is thankful. Thankfulness. Everywhere in, in, the, in, the, in the scripture, we are always told that Prayer and thanksgiving always go together. You know that? Prayer and thanksgiving, they always go together. And you see it in the scriptures. Pray without ceasing and give thanks in all circumstances. And then, do not worry about everything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, present your request to God with thanksgiving. 
And here, devote yourself to prayer, being thankful, being watchful and thankful. Prayer and thanksgiving, they always go together. Bakit kaya? I find this very, very practical. Tayo, we don't usually mingle with someone, someone we are not really grateful, we are not happy with, to be with. Tama? That's why for believers who are not thankful, they usually stop praying. They are not grateful for what God has done in their lives. If they would not see God's goodness in their lives, these people would stop coming to God in prayer. So aside from it is a requirement, it is a command by God when we come to Him in, in prayer, it should be with thanksgiving. Thanksgiving also is very, very important that would draw us to God in prayer for us to be devoted in our prayer life. So once we are grateful, once we, are, we see God's goodness in our life and we're happy about what God is doing in our life, that will draw us closer to God in prayer. Thankful people are prayerful people. Thank uh, people who are ungrateful. They seldom come to God in prayer. Usually, pag emergency lang. Okay, next one. Devoted prayer includes petitions for open doors. We see in verse 3, and pray for us too that God may open a door for our message so that we may proclaim the mystery of Christ for which I am in chains. So devoted prayer is unselfish prayer. Have that love and concern for other people. Have you heard of that young lady who said, Mom, you know, I changed my prayer life. I changed my prayer, my, the content of my prayers. Because before, my prayers have always been about me, about me, about me. So selfish. But I realized, Mom, it's, it's really not good. So selfish. So my, the mom said, So how was your, what was your, your prayer last night? Mom, I, I prayed to God that God will give you a very, very handsome son-in-law. Pinadaan pa pero para sa kanya pa din eh. Okay? But here, the Apostle Paul, when the Apostle Paul says, be devoted to prayer. I mean, our prayer, devoted prayer includes the petitions for open doors, for opportunity to share the gospel. Okay? Selfless kind of prayer. Next one, devoted prayer. Okay, devoted prayer is humble. Remember that Paul, although he was a great apostle, and yet, hindi siya nahihiya to ask for prayers from believers. Sometimes our problem is that we don't, we're not humble enough to ask for people to pray for our needs. We're not humble enough to be transparent that we are weak, that we are in need, that we need the prayers of other people. That many times as believers, we always want to show a front na we are just okay. But here's the apostle, a great apostle. He asked for believers to pray for him. We know that Apostle Paul was a great apostle. And yet, he asked for prayers. He humbly asked for prayers for other believers. The next, last one. Devoted prayer is undistracted. So we know also that in this context, Paul was in prison. And yet, it did not distract him from his work, from his mission. It did not distract him to be actively still engaged in mission because he believes that life is always on mission if you are a believer. So how about us? I know that this year, that the year 2022, we have experienced uh, mga ups and downs, challenges. But has it in our life, has it happened that in our life, 
when trials will come our way, we are distracted from our missions. We are distracted to be actively involved in sharing the gospel or in praying for the work of the Lord. But Apostle Paul, in spite of his situation, he was in chain. And yet, it did not distract him. So devoted prayer is undistracted prayer. This year, 2023, for sure, we will experience some ups and downs, challenges in life. It will not be smooth sailing along the way. But the question is that, would we, by the grace of God, not be distracted by all these things that would be happening in our life and still be focused on our prayer life and our mission to be a missional Christian, to be a mission-centered believer. Okay? The last one, the second, interaction of believers. Kanina is the intercession of believers, our prayer life. And this time, the last one is talking about our interaction of that interaction of our believers. How do we interact with people, the outsiders? It says, be wise in the way you act toward outsiders and make the most of every opportunity. What does it mean to be wise? What does it mean to be wise? Okay. To be wise in our attitude, in our behavior towards outsiders. Okay, let's go to the first one. Okay. That means we have to live an authentic Christian life. Be wise in the way you act toward outsiders. That means let us make sure that our talk will match our talk. Be authentic. Second one. And it says, strategically use your talent to witness for Christ. It says, um, be wise in the way you act toward outsiders and make the most of every opportunity. To make the most of every opportunity, that means to buy time. To make use of it. To take advantage of it. That it will be used to witness Christ. So what does it mean? In our conversations with other believers, in our, in our interactions with, with unbelievers, let's make it a goal that we will shift our topic to a godly conversation. We will shift our topic to an opportunity that we, we could witness the Lord Jesus Christ. First one is about authentic Christian life. It's, uh, the, Bible, the, uh, the Bible tells us that uh, we have to be wise in the way we act. In other words, we have to make sure that these people who, whom we meet, they will see Christ in our life. Then the next one, be committed to godly speech. And there are three things there. Okay, next up. Be attractive, be effective, and be responsive. So godly speech, that means we must be attractive. It says, let your conversation be full of grace. Every day we meet people. Usually, maririnig natin, complaints, problems, issues. But when they hear us, what will they hear us? Will they hear a person who has experienced the grace of God that is now reflecting the grace of God to other people in the way we talk? Will our words be encouraging? Will our words be inspiring? Will our words be full of grace? It's given that the people we meet every day, especially the unbelievers, what we hear is that words of criticism, words of discouragements, chismes, and all. How about us believers? The Bible says that our conversation be full of grace. Second, it must be effective. It says not just be full of grace, but be seasoned with salt. Salt is very, very effective. And using the, the metaphor of a salt, it has, a lots of, it, has, it has lots of meaning. Because one, we know that salt preserves, right? Uh, and salt is very, very valuable during their time. In, in fact, that's being used as a parang, parang pera. Diba? That's why you hear that word, uh, he is not worth 
the salt. Okay? And soldiers fight for that. Wars are being won for that, the sake of salt. Soldiers go to war because of that. They're valuable. So that means, are our words valuable? Or trust talks na lang palagi? How do we win people out there? I remember one evangelist who visited a certain area to, to preach. He was invited by the church. And during that evangelistic meeting, he challenged people to come to Christ. And then after that event, when there was this parang kain-kain, he heard this group of believers, members of the church, and he heard this group of believers making fun of the music during that evangelistic meeting, making fun of the leaders during that time, and even making fun of their pastor. And so this, this visiting evangelist was so sad that he went to the table and said, before he, he left home, he said, you know, I don't want to be bad, but if I am an unbeliever and I hear you, and I am the one who hears you and I am an unbeliever, I tell you what, you are driving me away from Christ instead of drawing me closer to Christ. So, the Apostle Paul here, the, the scripture tells us, our words, let our conversation be full of grace, our conversation be seasoned with salt. And then it will be responsive also. And we should, the Bible tells us that we should know how to answer everyone. We should know how to answer everyone. How do we know how to answer everyone? Except studying, constant study in God's Word. So we have ready. We are ready to minister to other people. So brothers and sisters in the Lord, let us all remember this, that we are on mission every day. Okay? You don't have to just prepare yourself because you go somewhere for a mission. You don't have to prepare yourself just because you are planning to do these certain ministries. Every day, as you wake up, let us all remember this. In our intercession, as believers and in our interaction with unbelievers. Let our walk, let our talk match our walk. Let us be authentic. Let us guard our testimony in our life, in our message, in our conduct towards the unbelievers. So let me ask us a question this morning before I end this message. In what ways has God challenged you to live a more mission-centered Christian? As we, I believe last night or these few days, you've been reflecting for the year 2022 and then looking forward for the year 2023. In what ways has God asked you or challenged you to be a missional believer? In what ways has God challenged us to be actively involved in the work of missions? I'm thankful that this church, uh, we have been supporting lots of mission work. I'm so happy na, uh, when, I, when we look at our funds many times, sa missions, sa budget natin sa church, when we look at our funds, although may sinasabi iba, mayaman ang church natin, but if we just, they will just see our record about sa missions and others, kita mo na halos even. Mayari. Sometimes, it's a short path, and we would just say, I will pray to God that God will provide. It's because this church had been actively involved in supporting missions, supporting different ministries. So TAP is just one of that. 
church planting ministries, Bible colleges who are equipping uh, future leaders, para church ministries, campus ministries, missionaries. We've been supporting this church. But this morning, as individuals, what has God challenged us to be? In what ways does God challenge us for us to be a missional believer as individual? Not just as a church, because a church, we as leaders of the church, we're doing our best to be involved in the work of the Lord. We believe that the coming of Christ is very, very near. That's why the Apostle Paul Hill tells us that we have to take every opportunity, to grab every opportunity, to buy time. Take the most, make the most of every opportunity. You now, if I think of that, as I was reading this, why did God say that? Now I realized that tama nga pala. God has given us his unlimited grace, unlimited love. But when it comes to time, we know that there are limitations. When it comes to time, there are limitations. When it comes to time, we are limited. That's why the Bible tells us to make the most of every opportunity. I'm, remi- I'm, I'm, I'm reminded that I'm given by the Lord that unlimited love grace allowed with experience in my life even in even in failures even in shortcomings even in my shortcomings before the Lord you know if I reflected all these things in my life I would really say that God's grace is really unlimited his love is so unlimited in my life at lambeses tayo magkamali But when it comes to time, when it comes to time, we have limited time. My time would be limited. That's what our professor would say. Every time you preach to unbelievers especially, always remember, remind yourself, maybe that would be your last. When you go to the mountains and reach out to these people who are there, I would always remind myself, that maybe that would be my last. Baka din ako makabalik sa pamilya ko. That's why I have to make sure that they will hear the gospel. Because our time is limited. It could be my last or it could be their last. So I visited some areas. Nang kubalik ko. Sana si Kuan wala na pala. Pumanaw na. We have very limited time. That's why the, the, the Bible says, Make the most of every opportunity. So what is it that God has challenged us? In what ways has God challenged us to be actively involved in the work of missions? Remember, you are on a mission field. You cannot afford to just take for granted and just let the day go on without bringing people to Christ. So we come to God in prayer. Dear God, we just want to commit to you, Lord God, our lives, Lord. You know how limited we are, Lord God, in terms of resources. But Lord, we just want to come before your presence this morning, Lord God. Asking you, Lord God, to Place that burden, that desire in our heart, Lord God. To make the most of every opportunity, Lord. Lord, I pray that 
we will realize, O oh God, that we are always on mission. That there are people, the people every day, Lord, that we meet are the people that has to be ministered. Lord, I pray that you just make us a channel of your blessing, Lord God, especially to those who are outsiders, to those who are unbelievers. Make us, Lord, a channel of your blessing. May we be devoted in our prayer life, Lord, as we intercede for the work of the Lord, as we intercede for those who are lost, as we intercede for those who are doing the work of ministry, doing the missions and evangelism. Oh God, I pray also, Lord, that in every opportunity that we have every day, may we always turn our conversation, Lord, into a topic that would bring people to their needs, realization of their needs, the realization of that they need the Lord Jesus Christ in their life. May like the soul, Lord, when people hear us, when people will be around us, oh God, they would thirst for more. They would thirst, Lord God, for Christ in their life. Make us a blessing to the people around us. May our conversations we will always be full of grace. Our conversations will be seasoned with salt. This we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Okay, so this morning, wala po tayong choir. No? Uh, yung mga choir na hangover. <laughs> Babakasyon. Okay. Uh, Kunti lang kami sa choir this time. Uh, busy. Uh, some of them uh, have been to vacation, family. So this time, let's proceed to our uh, communion time. And before we do that, let's, um, let me just read for us a passage from Matthew chapter 26. It says, Now as they were eating, Jesus took bread and after blessing it, broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink to it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sin. And in verse 29, I tell you, I will not drink again of this fruit of the vine, until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. This morning, as we have our communion time, the Lord Jesus Christ tells us, every time we partake of these elements, we do this in remembrance of Him. In remembrance of the person of Christ. The Lord who was God, who is God, was born and died for our transgressions, for the forgiveness of our sins. Let's remember the person of Christ and the provision that he has given us. But through his blood, through his death on the cross, we receive forgiveness, we receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. And there is this promise here also. Let's remember his promise. And he said, I will not drink of this again until I drink it with you in my Father's kingdom. That's our promise that Jesus Christ will come again and he will bring us in the Father's kingdom. He told this, he said this just before his death. In other words, this is assurance for the, for the apostles during that time, the disciples during that time, that although he will die, and yet he will live again. And this is assurance for us also, believers. He will come again and take us to be with him in his Father's kingdom. Whatever challenges, whatever difficulties you have encountered in this life, let us remember that all these things, the hardships, difficulties, the trials, struggles we have will one day be over, but we will be in the Father's kingdom. Let's continue on serving the Lord. 
trusting the Lord. Let's continue on serving Him with all our hearts. In spite of challenges, knowing that we have this wonderful promise, He will come for us and He will end all these things that we struggle in this life. Some of us maybe have experienced or have the struggles about physical health, relationships, finances, whatever struggles you have in your life. There's a promise here that one day it will be over. Because He will come for us. He will bring us with Him. Okay, so at this time I request my fellow pastors to join me here. Help us uh, distribute the elements. Let us prepare our hearts again. The Bible tells us, the Lord reminds us that every time we do this, we do this in remembrance of Him. Remembrance of the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Remembrance of the provision He has given us through His death. Remembrance of His promise that He will come again for us. Remembrance of His command also. As He says that we will proclaim His death until He will come again, every time we do this. And He also reminded us in Corinthians that as we come, let us come with sincere hearts. Let us come before His table ready. That's why the scripture says, examine yourself before you partake of the elements. So this time shall we come to God in prayer. Let us bow down our heads. Let us talk to him this morning. Nothing is hidden before him. He knows us through and through. He knows everything about us. Our thoughts, everything that we've done. He knows our spiritual condition at this very moment. Why don't we just come to the Lord and be honest before him. Allow him to pinpoint those things that are displeasing before him. And bring it before the Lord, asking for His forgiveness to cleanse us and to make us ready as we partake of these elements. Father, we thank you so much, Lord, for your great love upon us, Lord. Your word declares that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us, O God. Lord, thank you so much that as we gather together, Lord, around this the Lord's table this morning. O oh God, we are reminded that we are partakers of that great salvation that you have offered to us. We are reminded that we enjoy this salvation not because of what we've done, but because of what Christ has done for us on the cross of Calvary. It's all by your grace that we are here this morning. It's all by your grace that one day we will stand in heaven and enjoy the blessings that you have prepared for us, the blessing of eternal life. It's all by your grace, Lord God. God, as we partake of these elements this morning, I pray that you prepare us, Lord God. Cleanse us from anything that dishonors your name, anything, Lord, that displeases you. Lord, I pray that you bring us to that point of coming before you in repentance and asking for your forgiveness. Lord, be with us, Lord. Work in our hearts this morning. Fill our hearts with joy and thanksgiving. Reminding us how much you love us. Thank you and we praise you. In Christ's name, amen. Okay, so this time, our, my fellow pastors will be distributing the elements. Uh, please get the elements and then we will wait for each other because we will partake together. In some other churches, no, uh, they will just 
there is a direct, so, so different practices. For sa dito, we will uh, do it together. Uh, so, as a church. On the night when Jesus Christ was betrayed, he took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Eat, all of you, and do this in remembrance of me. So we partake together. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Drink and do this in remembrance of me. So we partake together. Father, indeed, words are not enough, Lord, to thank you, to say thank you, Lord God, for what you've done for us, O God. We were sinners. We're dead because of our sins. We are useless and worthless, Lord God. And your word declares that because of our sins, what awaits us is the wrath of God. We were people without hope. But Lord, we thank you because you gave us your son, Jesus Christ, to come, to be born, and to die for us in the sin. On whom because of to die for us, Lord God. And thank you, Lord, because when you look at us, Lord God, you did not look at us with condemnation, but you look at us with compassion. And show us your great love for us on that cross of Calvary. Your word declares that God demonstrates his love for us. 
while we were still in our sins, and we were still rebellious, God, the Lord Jesus Christ, died for us. Oh Lord, words are not enough, Lord. So thank you for everything that you've done. Lord, I pray that as we live our life every day, may our life reflect that gratitude how grateful we are to you Lord God that Lord as we have received grace may our life be full of grace that we will, we will our words will be full of grace that our words will be seasoned with salt that we will be a blessing to the people around us there are still lots of people out there Lord God who needs to hear the gospel Use our life, Lord. Use us for your glory and for your honor. Use us, Lord God, to bring these people to the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ. God, thank you so much for this day. Thank you, Lord, for the presence of everyone this morning. We thank you, above all, Lord, for your presence in our midst this morning. Thank you for blessing our time. Thank you for the assurance that you will continue to shower us with your richest blessing as we, as we journey this year, 2023. Lord, we commit to you every day of this year, every hour of this year, Lord God. Recognize that apart from you, Lord, we are nothing, oh God. Maybe some of us, Lord, as we start this year, we have some burdens, some concerns, some problems that we are bearing silently at this very moment. God, I pray that you would come to us and minister to us, Lord God, in a very, very powerful way, in a very mighty way, Lord God. Lord, we believe, Lord God, that you are reliable at all times. As well, Lord, now, whatever we are in today, situations we are in today, or problems we are bearing today, Lord, we thank you because we can just commit them into your hands, Lord God. And you are an all-wise God. You are a sovereign God. And you are a loving Father. So Lord, whatever you would allow us to experience, we know, Lord, that it is always for our own good. God, thank you so much that we can just commit to you our lives, our church, our family, our work, our job, our business, Lord God. And we can just commit to you, Lord God, 2023, into your loving care. Thank you that the same God who journeyed with us for the past years will be the same God who will be with us this year and the years to come. Oh God, dismiss us with your blessing. Please do not send us from here, Lord, without your presence in our life. For we need you, Lord, every moment of our life. Send us, Lord, with your blessing, with your presence. Send us, oh God, with your peace. Send us, Lord, with that sense of commission that we are a people on mission every day. That we have the responsibility of sharing, bringing the gospel to the people we meet every day. Oh God, dismiss us with your blessing. This we pray in the name of God the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Thank you very much for joining us this morning. See you again uh, next Sunday. God bless.